online today uh, for a very interesting um, uh, very interesting seminar with one of our PhD alumni. So welcome back, Marianne Cooper, who has come to join us. Um, so Marianne um, holds a PhD in sustainable destination marketing, and she's been here at the Griffith Business School. So we welcome you back. Um, and a Master's of Science in Marketing and a Bachelor of Business and Administration degree. Um, and she's uh, from Chile. So over here visiting um, yes. and heading back over there soon. Um, what was really impressive about your CV, and I'm sure everyone's had an opportunity to read it, is not only are you an academic, but you do a lot of practitioner work as well, which is really exciting. Um, so looking forward to hearing a little bit about um, your work and, and your presentation today on mental health in destination marketing. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, well, uh, yes, first of all, I would like to thank you for coming here and for those who are on the online attendance. Um, as Sarah told you, I'm Marianne Cooper. I hold a PhD from GBS. Um, I finished it uh, seven years ago. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you a little bit about myself, my experience, and mostly about my research interest, which links tourism, mental health, and nature. Uh, the idea is to construct a framework that can help, or that can contribute uh, to, to have um, a finer, a finer grain quantification. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but the idea is that this, um, this interest, which links tourism, nature, uh, and mental health, can provide a framework to understand and to incorporate mental health in destination marketing and uh, nature-based tourism. So a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Villa and Martile. Actually, there was a link towards the map for those who are not very familiar with Chile, but um, yeah, technology sometimes wins over me. Uh, however, Chile is a very long pencil-shaped country, and it's actually on the opposite side of Australia from the of a Pacific Ocean. So, um, and this is just an anecdote, if you see the picture, there is, it's, a sun, it's a sunset in Viña del Mar, my hometown. And it's at the same time, or mostly at the same time, when the sun rises here at the Gold Coast on the east side. So what happened to me when I came here to do my PhD is that whenever I saw this sunrise, crazy cravings for barbecues started to appear. <laughs> you know, in Chile, we have this tradition of barbecues at sunset. So it's crazy how the setting and the image uh, really like triggered senses, emotions, and memories. So yeah, that's an anecdote, but as Sarah told you before, I hold a business and administration degree in, and a master's in marketing back in Chile. Um, I've always been very passionate about tourism, but at that time, there was hardly any professional tourism degrees in Chile. Uh, that's a very new uh, professional path. Um, so luckily for me, I uh, was able to have professional opportunities that were very linked to uh, Chile as a destination brand, for example, wine in the wine business. Uh, but it was in 2012 when I ran the domestic tourism campaign or brand for the National Service of Tourism in Chile. The brand was called Chile es tuyo. These are Spanish lessons as well, for free. <laughs> <laughs> so this means Chile is yours. And the fun challenge there was to make Chilean destinations or domestic destinations become trendy for Chileans. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Chileans are not trendsetters, they are followers. So what we really needed to do is to make, make it become cool, trendy, fashionable. And I think it worked. Now, the other interesting thing was that by that time, 2012, sustainability, sustainability was becoming stronger in terms of management, in tourism, and in the, in, the, in the marketing strategies. So that was also quite interesting. Then I came here to do my PhD. Um, I was supervised uh, by Beverly Sparks, by Ralph Buckley. Uh, it was a beautiful time of my life. And uh, my PhD was about green destination image. So what I wanted to see here is how a green image was constructed, projected, and perceived by different kinds of tourists, right? And 
the idea is was was to to be able to understand this holistic image into a concept that I called eco spirit. Yeah, that was my PhD about. Lately, I came back to Chile. I worked in different um, universities as lecturer, as as a lecturer, etc. And I ended up um, landing in an academic. No, sorry, as a as an academic coordinator for Sistema B in Latin America. What is Sistema B? Sistema B is an organization that promotes and develops uh, the movement of B corporations, usually led by B Lab, that we that you also have here in Australia. Uh, so what did I have to do over there? I had to promote and incorporate this business model, specific business model of AAA PAC and, and B corporations into the universities in Latin America. I'm not familiar with B corporation. Can you explain? Well, B corporations is um, is kind of like a movement. It's a certification. It starts with a certification. In Latin America, it's much more about a movement because in Latin America we need more stakeholders to become familiar with the triple impact, um, the, uh, with the fact that we that businesses no longer should be de um, dealing or not dealing, but responding to shareholders, but also stakeholders. So it's um, in the end, the idea of a B Corp is that utilities or, the, or yes, the return on investment. Uh, yes, they are not the important. It's what the impact. It's the impact between community, collaborators, environment. So it's a big movement now. Um, and lately, like the last job I had was being a director of ecotourism for Catholic University of Chile. Uh, for a brand actually called Puok. Now, what was the challenge here? The challenge was to deliver the programs when COVID started and lockdowns. And so that was quite a challenge, especially because in ecotourism, 50% of academic hours were of the curricula were on the field, right? But I also faced or encountered another, yeah, another challenge that actually triggered this uh, interest in mental health. I could see how COVID had an impact on the student community's mental health. And, and it was actually, yeah, it was very challenging. I think there's a lot to understand. And, and that's when I became interested, okay, so how can we like really study and join this mental health issue with tourism? So now I'm here, I'm very happy, and I got the chance to come here after finishing that job, and I will come back to another new job at the School of Tourism and Hospitality in Universidad Andres Bello. In that, um, in that position, my challenge, what they're asking from me, is to be able to boost research, because we need more research in Chile, mm -hmm. um, also innovation, and also to look into tourism as as a protagonist into solving global issues. So this is a little bit of my, about myself. And these are my publications. Of course, it's a little bit far away, but I can share this presentation with you if you need to. Uh, I will talk about four of these publications during the presentation. Now, about the abstract. The idea of this presentation is to be able to show you or to uh, tell you a little bit about the results of four different publications um, and integrate nature, tourism, mental health. Yeah, the idea is to be able to understand mental health tourism uh, from the drivers and mechanisms. The drivers are destination attributes, individual personalities, and activities, while the, me the, the mechanisms are senses, emotions, and uh, uh, memories, okay? So um, the idea here is to be able to uh, incorporate these two, these two uh, concepts or, or, or disciplines, mental health and nature, and be able to understand how they can be measured and then to and then, and then be able to uh, deliver or, or yes to deliver a basis so then we can uh, start doing a finer a uh, grain quantification research uh, in the future. So the agenda is quite simple. Uh, the introduction is about disruptive change, uh, about the times we're at now, 
trans uh, we will talk about frameworks, we will talk about concepts that can support uh, this area of interest. And then I will talk about four different publications. Uh, the first one will, mo will be mostly about how mental health incorporates into destination marketing. The second one will, uh, will tell us a little bit about how mental health can be used uh, in the tourism experience value theory. And um, then we will try to understand how these mechanisms can be measured in nature-based uh, tourism destinations, such as conservation areas or protected areas. And lastly, I will talk a little bit about what I'm doing right now, which is incorporate new drivers to this theory. Uh, and by this, I mean um, incorporate activities and incorporate uh, middle-aged women after COVID. So, <clears throat> Peter Russell in 2001 said that more than, a, than an environmental crisis, economic crisis, a political crisis, we are actually living a crisis of consciousness. And I really think that this can be quite an accurate statement for now in the post-COVID era. Now, if you see the pandemic started as a health crisis, but then it triggered and it eventually unfolded into other kinds of crises like livelihood loss, losses, family concerns, and nature deprivation. This in turn um, intensified interests in nature, mental health, and well-being. So pro, uh, governments started to look for affordable national scale public health programs to restore mental health and national, national economic productivity. In this sense, mental health is all a social, uh, has a social component, but also an economic component and value. Yeah. Um, what happens with tourism? Well, the national tourism um, boards and services of each country started to focus on domestic market marketing as a way to boost tourism recovery. So that's on the one uh, on one side. But on the other hand, uh, we also have that. Um, the World Tourism Organization as is asking, tour, uh, asking uh, tourist professionals and institutions to be able to incorporate this complexity uh, in their strategies and in the way they manage tourism. This is because we also have the climate change crisis. We have it, we've been having not even climate change, not natural uh, threats, not climate change threats, but they are happening here right now. So. Um, first of all, there's an urgency to be able to uh, make tourism become uh, carbon neutral by 2050. And the Travel Foundation reports that this will have to make also tourists uh, choose differently in terms of how they travel, right? So if infrastructure goes okay by 2050, there's also the need that, uh, or projection, sorry, that the uh, tourists will choose closer destinations, but uh, they will uh, they will stay or yeah they will stay for a longer time. And this is also part of the impact of COVID because now we have this flexibility at work, and the reality is that people can travel or can work remotely. Okay, so besides that, there's also all these climate change induced disasters that are forcing change in consumers and. Uh, I wanted to show this. I'm sure that everyone is familiar. These articles were published two months ago, and Susan Becken from this department, also Joanna Lohr and Sarah Donica, which is from the who is sorry for the from the University of Queensland. They all are saying that all these uh, environmental threats uh, will shift consumers' uh, behaviors in, 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 in terms of traveling and holiday. So is tourism, as we know it, over? We certainly need to make some changes. <laughs> so um, as we're talking about change, we think, oh, I think that transformative tourism is uh, an, the appropriate framework to be able to start Investigate, investigating and doing research on uh, tourism, mental health on these links, tourism, mental health and nature. So transformative tourism experience uh, is when tourists encounter landscapes, social dynamics or uh, 
different properties of the experience, and that triggers cognition and emotion. And in turn, it drives psychological, um, behavioral, uh, physical or social change. Now, this was a study and I thought that Anna Quake would be here, <laughs> but uh, a study that, that Wei, Tio and Anna Quake from this department as well, um, they, they studied, they did a, a systematic review on transformative uh, tourism experience papers, and they could see how all of them, the 106 papers, actually uh, they highlighted that these experiences were life had life-changing capacities for consumers. So for us, this is a valid framework to be able to start uh, incorporating mental health and impacts of tourism in mental health. Yeah. The other theory or model we're using is tourism, tourism experience because there it is uh, stated that both a trans it is both a transformative process and a transformative result. Uh, and also they can identify, it's a model where the drivers and the mechanisms are identified. Lastly, these are like the main concepts. And here the important thing is that tourism, uh, nature and health um, can be linked and the mental health benefits from tourism can be measured. Now, it is very important to, tell, uh, to, to consider that mental health is actually a medical uh, measurement. It's, an eco it's a health economics measurement, and it's not a psychological uh, measurement. So mental health has a broader, uh, incorporates a broader paradigm than other theoretical approaches such as wellness tourism, spa tourism, medical tourism, because it's, me it's measured different, uh, differently. So, um, uh, so the idea here is uh, to be able to understand how can we incorporate these measurements and how can we really cross over the, the economic, the health economic measurements with what, what tourism impacts. The other important aspect is that uh, we all know that nature has a, a positive impact in, in mental health and in well-being. So uh, the idea here is to be able to use that information and be able to understand this triad of, of, of links uh, within the nature-based uh, destination. Yeah, especially because after COVID, uh, nature destinations and national parks became, uh, started to become really uh, popular worldwide. Yeah, um, so, the idea is that this could become a, a valid framework that could relate nature tourism, uh, marketing, tourism experience, and national parks. So how did this start? Uh, I don't know if you see very well the, the, the models, but um, this was part of my PhD thesis 10 years ago. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was trying to understand how green destinations were, were perceived and what was like a, a, a perception of a green destination. Uh, and during these interviews, which I made many, many interviews, all of them, all the people uh, uh, talked about mental health. They talked about going to Patagonia and choosing Patagonia uh, because they wanted to disconnect, because they wanted to uh, reduce their stress levels, they wanted peace of mind, they wanted to uh, get to, to understand themselves better. So in the end, they all talked about mental health. So what we saw here is that mental health, even 10 years ago, was actually something that tourists were looking for. Health maintenance was their goal, or part of their goals when they traveled. So what we did is take the destination marketing and destination image model, and we incorporated mental health as a tourist goal, mental health maintenance. And the idea or, or, or what this showed is that um, people or tourists do a destination match between destination choice and destination image. They choose a destination where they believe, they perceive that they could have mental health benefits. Mental health is a driver for tourists. And we could also see uh, that 
that uh, stakeholders, um, GMOs and, and national and park rangers, they used that necessity in their tactics to communicate, in their promotion. So there is a way to incorporate this. Uh, destination marketing in the end was a response to that, um, to that necessity. In the end, destination marketing can pitch a mental health investment prospectus. Here is a, a summary of my pre-pandemic interviews, and uh, we also did post-pandemic interviews. Uh, and what we could see is exactly that, that uh, mental health is a big driver, mental health is part of their destination choice, and that even uh, marketing strategies recognize that, and they include them in their uh, promotional uh, uh, tactics and campaigns. So here, the big contribution is about uh, that the framework adds a marketing component uh, that tourism mental health, as I said, is a primary driver and the destination marketing is a response. Um, that tourists create a mental match between destination choice and destination image, always this, with this mental health goal. Um, and that uh, by this, we can incorporate tourist mental health in tourist experience. So for that, what we did is a comparison of theories. We took the tourism experience value model where tourists pay for the products and assign values to, to the experiences. And by assigning values is, I mean, uh, measuring, for example, satisfaction, well-being, quality of life, yeah? And on the other hand, we took a tourism mental health model where the destination, the activity, and the social context were uh, drive uh, to mechanisms such as senses, uh, senses, emotions, and memories, yeah? And these have a short or long-term um, uh, impact. Uh, this uh, comparison of theories, is, uh, we did it through a theory of theories. And what we found is that even though both the tourism experience value model and tourism mental health model have different expectations and different outcomes, the components and the linkages between their components uh, are actually congruent. <clears throat> so now that we have the drivers and the mechanisms, uh, we can see that we need to understand these mechanisms and as, we, as I told you before, um, since the protected areas can become a, 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 a very a well-studied destination in terms of nature and, and, and impact on, on tourists, um, we wanted to look how we can measure these mechanisms, how can we understand these mechanisms, because the prescriptions for psychotherapy, for instance, need a basis or a foundation to be, to be able to deliver the dose, the duration, the response, uh, for different uh, tourists or patients or personalities, yeah? So the idea here is to be able, we, what we did was to look into different protected areas in Chile, China, and Australia. And what we did, given that different protected areas are managed differently and different countries manage their protected areas differently, we, wanted, we took a look at this uh, and reviewed it at four scales. The first one was um, global, and we, what we did is review or analyze the approach to the, the accessibility people had in nature, and the, uh, have to nature, sorry. Um, then we reviewed at a national uh, scale where, what, where we focused on looking into mental health approaches of each country. Uh, after that, a sectorial scale from where we could uh, look into models, types of funding for the different protected areas. And lastly, as an individual scale where we could, we, we need to understand that every individual has different necessities according to personalities, according to expectations, etc., etc. Yeah. Also, to be able to look into the fact that uh, at this stage, the, there is a role to play in nature tourism guides and also in psychology. So, um, 
So what did, what did we see? First of all, protected areas can deliver a space or a destination to provide psycho, uh, psychotherapies in nature. But the impact is very little. I mean, it could become a commercial opportunity for some operators uh, and for some protected areas. But in the end, in terms of uh, public health issue, of public health, uh, it doesn't make much of a difference. So what, what we really need to happen here is that, first of all, there must be partnerships or there's a need to form partnerships, maybe be between national parks and outdoor tourism guides or nature tourism operators. Uh, or maybe tourism and, health, um, and healthcare enterprises, and that there are some learned skills that are relevant. For example, nature, uh, nature tour guides can maximize the mental health impacts or benefits of outdoor tourism because we could see that in the end the theories are very are congruent. Now, there's also opportunities to study the impacts and mechanisms for this joint. The uh, joint theory of tourism experience value and mental health. Um, in, for example, how do I don't know how do the um, how how the how do the, is the transformation between you know, a short term emotion to a long term memory, for instance. Uh, and uh, also, there is an opportunity for research on the impacts of active outdoor tourism and mental health. And this is exactly what we are doing now. We're doing a, a, a research paper on outdoor activities and women's health, mental health. <laughs> I was up to the moon because that's my challenge with the guys doing this sort of outcome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just came through your paper and said, where is the gender, you know, <laughs> separation to understand what Skype means. Oh, yeah, no, excellent. but this excellent. is, yeah, this is a, the study aims to understand the impact of mental health and resilience for middle aged women who choose to surf. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because women were strongly impacted by uh, COVID in terms of mental health. Middle-aged women, they were head of families, they had to stay at home. They were... And the truth is that uh, this also kept, uh, happened during pandemic back home. And there were like groups of women going for a surf, even when they were not surfing before, you know? So that's where we started uh, looking into that. Um, and not only that, I mean, we're adding this new social context, which is the, the, the middle-aged women post-COVID. Uh, but also, uh, we wanted to understand whether outdoor programs that deliver this active adrenalinic uh, activity were more effective in terms of mental health impacts than maybe contemplative. That's what we are trying to figure out as well. Yeah. So what did what did we do? We do we did um, first. I also put input on my personal experience as being a middle-aged woman who serves during pandemic. <laughs> uh, but mostly we did a focus group, uh, and we're also having interviews, seven interviews down in Chile. We're also gathering data here in Australia, and it's important to say that yes, active outdoor tourism or outdoor programs. Uh, have a great impact or have a positive in impact on mental health. And this is because not only it has the nature, it has uh, the social context component, but it also has this mastery and skill development component that has a high impact on empowerment. So we could see that surf tourism can be a catalyst for inclusion because it's a male dominated uh, sport. Um, it has it can catalyst uh, women empowerment because of the mastery and skill development and also sustainable behaviors. Usually, um, we all know that uh, a healthy woman impacts a healthy family, a healthy society, and women in the end, uh, if they're carrying out activities that have a relationship to nature connectedness, the ocean, and they are usually the ones that. Uh, pick or they choose the or they be yes they, they they choose how to how the household consumes sorry for my English it's very rusty uh, so so of course this this could have a good impact there as well adrenaline uh, outdoor experiences are impactful tools to prevent mental health deterioration uh, because it incorporates a sense of well-being and uh, through skill development 
And you can see, well, it's very far away, but uh, in the interviews, they were talking about surf as a therapy, surf as a spiritual, uh, as a spiritual uh, space, uh, surf as a place where time, there's no time, uh, or time stands still, sorry. Um, so yes, it's it's becoming a, an interesting result. So what are the final thoughts here? First of all, if mental health can become um, or mental health measures can be included in uh, tourism impacts for sure. Um, even though the mental health is a, a health and economics uh, measurement. We can say that if we invest in this in destination marketing, for example, in nature based destinations in protected areas, we may contribute to um, to di diminish the, the mental health impacts from COVID. Now, tourists see holidays as investments to their own mental health. Um, but the important thing here is to be able to understand that these tourism benefits can be taken into account as a personal benefit or as a social, as a public health benefit, as something that really impacts society. And it can even be in terms of preventive uh, components or clinical com components, where, for example, in preventive components, um, I don't know, it can be funded by private or individual or also by public health program, or in terms of clinical components, maybe health insurers or at least part of it. Um, on the other hand, in healthcare, it would be there's an opportunity to be to to, to keep on researching and design, construct a, and implement a nature based mental health program therapy. Um, within mainstream healthcare systems to see what could be working and how these two models can really uh, apply. In conservation terms, it would be good to calculate marginal returns if we, for example, uh, put on increments on the budget for protected areas and see how this could impact uh, mental health. Uh, also look into the practical politics because conservation, I mean, because it's a health measurement. So, of course, there's a lot of ethics there. Um, and what else? Lastly, that, um, yeah, there's a need to quantify the mechanisms uh, in terms of the drivers. And that is, quantify senses, emotions, and uh, memories in terms of the place, the setting, the activity, and the person, the individual. Yeah, because uh, at the end, um, yeah, there's still a lot of, um, at the end, there's still a, sorry, um, because at the end of the day, um, <laughs> sorry for that, my English. Uh, anyway, so, so the idea here is to have the opportunity to uh, start quantifying all these uh, to be able to make these theories work right and, and be applied um, because at the end of the day what we are looking into or what we are finding out is that mental health uh, measurements can be provided by tourism impacts and tourism uh, impacts can also be um, be helpful in terms of designing nature-based therapies uh, within the tourist experience. So this is it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience, especially because my English is very rusty. I'm sorry for that. Uh, uh, but. Uh,